in the men's aisle, when you're talking about sales and who's king, there's no doubt about it. Overall, I'm not talking about 2019 sales. I'm talking about overall in the men's game, EDG is king. Now, sales doesn't produce the best fragrance in the world and you should be buying this in 2019. No, 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 that's not what it means. But Armani finally piggybacked on, on the best-selling name, ADG, and they did their own in the women's aisle here, Aqua Di Joa. And I can't wait to let my two female subscribers know because I gotta give you guys content too. Don't worry, the men out there, you can stick around and see if there's this is worth it for you to get for your wife, your girlfriend, your mom, your sister. I'll get back to men's fragrance reviews really soon, but my two female subscribers, this one's for you. family welcome to taking a test drive this is where i test drive a set prior to purchasing or forgetting about it um, i love of course sampling discovering new stuff and uh of course tippy toying more into the women's aisle i uh i like to do that from time to time there's a lot of fragrances and and to me i think like 98 percent of the fragrances out there don't need a gender but there is that little two percent that are ultra masculine and some are ultra feminine um so i like to tippy toe in that aisle too and just to see what's going on so i wear these fragrances even these ones right here one to two wearings with the sample i got an official sample here and let you know my thoughts so today we are in the house of armani and this is their female counterpart of edg this is aqua di Gioa by armani so let's take a look under the hood before i start describing this scent on some stats on this one. So the release date is 2010. Um, Concentration, this is an Eau de Parfum. Uh, the nose behind this, uh, we got a three-headed monster and we got some noses that if you're in the fragrance game, you're gonna recognize some of these noses. Uh, absolutely, Anne Flippeau, Dominique Rapillon, those are all-star noses. And also there's Lock Dong, which uh, to be quite honest, I can't name off one fragrance that Lock Dong has done. So resume, probably not as impressive as Dominique. And, and a major note in this particular fragrance, this is a freshie folks. Um, it piggybacks of course on EDG from the men's aisle. So I'm thinking aquatic for the women out there. So let's see if I'm right. Major notes to my nose were lemon, and mint, and those are ultra freshies, especially mint. I can't wait to see what they're gonna do with the mint and jasmine. So we got a floral here that can go both ends. A lot of men's fragrances also has jasmine. Now my day with Aqua Di Joa, let's, uh, let's remind me, I still have a little bit left of this fragrance. So let me remind me of the introduction. I am wearing it as my scent of the day today. So I do have the dry down on my arms here, but the opening of EDG is very fresh. Ozonic, and this is what I came to expect. Actually, very surprising to me, very watery. Um, it was actually, if I gotta be honest, and <laughs> it has a better opening than the male counterpart, which is a bestseller across the world. Um, those might be fighting words, but hell, that opening is very much, very watery and ozonic, like not as fakey as the ADG was for the men counterpart. Uh, very green from the mint backing, uh, very nice lemon note, and a large floral presence, of course, backing um, that, which is uh, jasmine. Of course, I can I can detect some jasmine and some peony. Um, the use of mint here is quite impressive, as it as sometimes mint, of course, gives like a menthol, like it gives a, a fragrance, like a big punch um in freshness basically and other times it uses the scents it, it uses mint in a fragrance um as just a refresher an uplifting manner uh but not really giving that menthol hit but just being fresh all around and it does that in this fragrance it just it doesn't really show much of the mint but it gives that uplifting feel of mint, which I absolutely love. It's well-placed, it's used correctly in this fragrance to emphasize the citrus right off the bat. It really is a bed of mint that throws that lemon, and that lemon is nice, I'm not gonna lie. I like that lemon on this, and it just throws that lemon to your nose with the, the, the mint just backing it. And it gives you that, the. it also emphasizes the florals later on with the mint 
it, it gives the, the the florals almost an ozonic uh, feel like a breath of fresh air, um, almost a wet um, floral uh, petal. Um, really nice. You just get, um, it, it's actually really, really nice opening. You'll get some sweetness from the jasmine. I know they have a note of brown sugar in this fragrance. They list that. I don't get any real brown sugar quality. Yes, there's sweetness, but I think it's more from the jasmine. I, I don't feel like a, a thick or a syrupy sweetness in this fragrance. The color of the cap and juice in here, like I'm looking at this to see almost like a turquoise color, um, not really blue, a greenish color. And I feel like this is absolutely the type of color I'm thinking with this fragrance. It's not a blue aquatic fragrance. It's more of a green aquatic fragrance, light green with watery aspects, almost a green blue ocean. I'm very clean. Um, well done. I like this opening. Um, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's well constructed. Once we hit the dry down, this one doesn't move much. It has, um, it doesn't have the complexity that the male counterpart has. The male counterpart has some complexities more into the heart. It util utilizes some herbs and and uh, some aquatic tones and things like that. But uh, moving back to this one, um, the florals continue to push with an ozonic quality. Um, the sweetness from the jasmine pushed a little bit more here uh, than the opening. I mean, you're gonna get a little bit of wood back and a little bit of cedar slowly creeping through. And it just gives the set a light woody backbone uh, overall um you're not going to get blown away if you're in fragrances like huge into fragrances you know you're into niche and stuff like that but you can admit that it's a well-constructed scent very linear though there's not much moving parts but it's a nice safe fragrance for daily use now let's get into the revolver and see what i think about seasons uh, versatility performance and all that let's get into it um seasons um, the one thing, again, um, I, I'm still training my nose in regards to a lot of floral fragrances and, and the women's aisle, you know, that little 2% that I don't know much about. Like a, a men's fragrance, you can just spray it on a piece of paper and I'll tell you, seasons, day, night, um, is it ultra versatile? Is it, uh, is it high quality, low quality? There's a lot of things that I can dissect. In the women's aisle, especially florals, it, that is not my forte. Um, so when I think florals, I, especially in the men's aisle, when they utilize iris or rose in a fragrance, I, I immediately think spring. It's great for spring. Um, and that's what I feel about this fragrance. Perfect for this upcoming spring. Um, not only because of the mint, because mint's great for spring and summer. Uh, but you can wear this one, I think spring and summer, just because of that mint. But the florals also emphasize the spring um, season. Uh, really good for uh, more of a freshy fragrance. A day or night, um, I really think that this is definitely a daytime. A, I could see this uh, on a woman at work, uh, a professional woman. Um, I really like it and actually I'm quite impressed from Armani on this one. Versatility is pretty versatile scent. I didn't feel like there was any restrictions while wearing this fragrance. Um, I wouldn't mind actually, um, you know, recommend, recommending this to somebody out there uh, for wife, sister, um, any woman in their life. Um, performance. Uh, performance, it's not beast. Uh, you're gonna get four to seven hours, which is a little light in regards to what I'm looking for. I'm always looking for like a seven to nine hours in, in longevity, especially for a workday scent. I want it to last the whole day, not half the day. Um, and it has weaker projection, which is also good in the office, especially if you got, you know, not scent free, but close to scent free that people uh, don't like you wearing fragrances. You don't want to be that one person at work. This is good for that. Um, so not too bad, but not so great in regards to performance. So my final thoughts on Aqua di Joa, uh, I feel like this one is a good daytime, everyday work type scent for the warmer months. The mint did well here and will make some people think mojito. Uh, to me, the florals came in almost immediately once the, the mint played a big part in this fragrance. So it took me a way of thinking mojito. It's fresh, it's easy to throw on, very much makes me think of a turquoise watery scent. So a good one from Armani. I can't complain here. If I had to give it a score today um, for the woman in your life, I would actually give this an eight out of 10. I was actually, you know, I'm not blown away. Um, I really think this is, geared more for the women in your life than a unisex scent, uh, to be quite honest. Like it's not something I'm like, hmm, maybe, you know, it's gonna go in my collection. No, um, would I recommend this to someone? Yeah, I think it'd be part of a fresh daily wear scent that if somebody's looking for that, 
I would put this in the category of check out like five to 10 fragrances. This might be on the list. Eight out of 10, really good from Armani. So to my two women subscribers, I'd love to hear your take on this one in the comments below. If you have sniffed it, good or bad, I'd love to hear your take. Um, do you think I'm I'm off on this fragrance or you know you're you agree with me in regards to quality of performance and all that stuff? I'd love to hear your take. If you enjoy this content, please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Also, if you haven't hit the bell, are you part of my notification gang yet? If you haven't already checked me out, I am on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm on, I'm on Facebook, I'm all over social media. You can type it robes08. When you want to go a lazy way, you can hit it down below. I got links to all of them. I also have a Facebook group called Fragrance Guru Nation. What happens there is we got 15,300 members. We discuss fragrances. There's tons of women in, in that. So if you are a woman and you're looking for a Facebook group, come come join us on fgn and discuss fragrances um i will leave you with a few takes from my social media i did ask everybody on my social media i didn't get too many responses but i'll share them with you good or bad um and those are of course are going to be a back end of this video as they always are and i certainly appreciate everybody on my social media that did uh, give me their take on this fragrance so I'll always leave you with a nice little quote from me as always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching, YouTube. Have a good one.